Well, if you're listening to this one, uh, it means you may have some interest uh, in the English language or you just want to hear a story about the English language. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that you can find uh, people online uh, talking about their their capabilities in English and, and foreigners people who are not native speakers of English, how they've, how they've learned it over time and how there's many different parts to the English language to learn. Um, and I know I'm speaking in my native language right now, which makes this so much easier. I'm speaking to you in English. So uh, I wanted to share uh, with you, hopefully this is encouraging to you, uh, from a learning perspective, and maybe you, um, there's some foreigners listening to this, uh, me speak in English, and they 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 have a, a stronger capacity and capability in the English language than I do, uh, even though I'm a native speaker, and that that's going to be the theme of my uh, my message to whoever's listening to this. Uh, who's interested or interested in learning or interested in in learning more about the English language or or is looking for some advice. Of course, as a native speaker, I have an advantage. I have an the advantage is this is my language. So when I'm speaking, I'm I'm not really thinking too much. I'm just talking. I'm not thinking about uh, how to translate or how would I say something in. I'm just letting the words flow. And a lot of that comes from uh, this. I've been speaking for a long, 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 long time. And I believe that that's built in from memory and muscle memory and how um, just patterns of behavior, many, many, many uh, uh, situations have been exposed to over time have accumulated and and all my, I mean, my my key uh, upbringing was in in English, so that gives me a huge, huge advantage. But in this, uh, I can focus on a few aspects of the language, which I think, as a learner of English, may help you based on my understanding of me trying to learn and and picking up to a level some other languages, not English. Uh, number one, number one is language learning is forever. I think you know this, if, if this is uh, you trying to learn a second language or this is you trying to sharpen your language. It never stops. Language learning is forever. Even me as an as a native English speaker, um, I had the opportunity to join a a company uh, years ago, and it was a um, it was kind of like a, an office environment, and you know, and I had at that point at that point when I had joined the company. I mean, I had already gone through school. I thank God I graduated from college. I had already worked at a different company, more than one different company. So when I joined this company, uh, I remember that, and this is a company in, in the U.S., in the United States. I remember I, I was asked to join a conference call, Okay. So the conference call was a phone call, you know, it was, it was going to be people from the United States in the New York area, and it was going to be people from uh, London in England area, right? I get on this conference call, I join the call, and they start going through the topics, and I just want to say, as they started talking, the people who were running the call, they were they were the ones who uh, called the call, like made it together. They called the conference. They were speaking in English, explaining themselves, 
talking about the topics we're going to talk about and then explaining each topic and having a conversation as a native English American speaker I could not understand 40 to 50 percent of that call and I was shocked I was shocked to be on a call where they're not speaking a foreign language, they're speaking English. But it was English from uh, England, and some of the speakers on the call were from kind of more like the country areas in, uh, in the United Kingdom. And the accents were too strong. I, I couldn't hear, even though they were speaking English, I couldn't understand the words. And, you know, what was, it blew me away. It, it, it surprised me. And that was the beginning of my understanding about how language itself is very deep. It's very involved. It's very, um, some ways, unpredictable. Because uh, as I stayed at that company, and this was a company that was uh, the the headquarters was out of the United Kingdom. The more I was at that company, uh, when, as the emails were being sent between people, and not only emails from people in the United Kingdom, but people locally here in the East Coast of the United States. Some of the vocabularies that were being used, I didn't understand. I didn't know what the words meant. And at that point, again, I was a native English-speaking, schooled, college graduate. Uh, admittedly, I did not do well in, in English in, in high school and uh, college. I struggled. I didn't have a really strong vocabulary. Uh, my SAT scores were were from an English perspective, weren't good. Uh, they were low from English. Uh, or Yeah, I think it's English or language. I think it was English. So my, my score f was low. But I was working full time. So you would expect, or I would have expected myself to not be so lost in some of the emails and the calls we had with United Kingdom and hearing the accent, but still not understanding not only the accent, some of the vocabularies. And, but it, it taught me a lesson about language. It taught me a lesson about the, the nature of what it means to learn a foreign language. As a native speaker, I was lost. And this is in my professional career. And I grew up in an environment, English speaking, studying English, uh, learning medium and all, all of those things. It taught me that it's okay if I'm making a mistake in learning a different foreign language. Like if I'm trying to learn English, if you're a foreigner trying to learn English, it's okay. There's a lot that, to learn over time. Take your time. But even when you think you've learned it all, you, you still haven't. I mean, even I'm a native speaker. I'm still learning things today. And this is, it's been decades of me speaking. So what I recommend, and this was meant to educate and to encourage whoever's listening. Uh, what I recommend is keep an open mind when it comes to languages. When it comes to learning English, uh, make it a point to, yes, to study and to try to sharpen your accent and and if you want and make it so that you sound more like the environment you want to be in. If you're in the U.S. and you want to sound more American, I mean, then you would have to sharpen your American accent. But if you're in some place like the United Kingdom and you want to sound more uh, like someone from there, then you would have to work on that accent if if you choose to work on your accent, but you don't have to. Accents are accepted, especially in the world today. And from a from a feelings perspective, if you feel like 
wow, you, you're, you're not comfortable speaking English because you don't know enough yet or because you may not get the words right or because you may not understand the response or what comes back to you if you ask a question and you get an answer, but you may not get the whole thing. I encourage you to uh, accept it. It's okay. Ask questions. Um, go back at, in your own time or it, depending on how you study and your approach to things, maybe look up the, the, the meanings in your own language, what it means in English. Realize, too, that there are a lot of sayings and, and idioms that we use in this language, um, you know, and you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, for example. That's a saying, just approach the language, take it with care, and you'll get the most out of it. And I'm, I'm sure that uh, you're doing well. If you've listened to this entire message in English, you're one step ahead already. You can do it. Um, English is infinite, and, and I'm living it, and it's okay if you're living it too.